Hey everyone, Truman Chin here and today I'm going to comment on the video by Jesse Josh who has taken a look at the AMD AI Rise, AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 laptop that's a mouthful and compare it with the Snapdragon X Elite which he criticized earlier so let's look at the benchmarks that he came up behind with. the much more expensive MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro 12 core chip that being said, Intel's best performing Core Ultra 9 and Qualcomm's XLE are really not that far behind. In Cinebench, which tests how these laptops perform under max load, it's an even better story for the Zen 5. The HX370 in the ProArt is neck and neck with the MacBook Pro 14 with a higher end M3 Pro 12 core chip. And it ties with the Snapdragon X Elite in the Slim 7X. By the way, we were very careful as to which laptops we chose to compare to in these graphs. We tried to pick an example of each of the major CPUs in laptops that are capable of delivering representative best performance. Anyway, once again, the Zen 5 processors are second only to Apple's M3 in single core performance, but you can clearly see a huge variance in multi-core scores. This reinforces that the performance of these new chips is going to depend a lot on what laptop they are in and how much power that laptop can feed to them. And with that said, let's look at power draw. Here you can clearly see why the ProArt performs so well. It is able to sustain around 50 watts of power. So if you remember yesterday, I will, I did a video on the Asus ProArt Pro Art PX13 and it has a dedicated NVIDIA GPU and here you can see just Josh confirming that it's the best performing uh, laptop right now because you know it provides enough power for both the GPU and of course the uh, APU which is the AMD Ryzen AI9 itself and that's why it's performing so well it's not exactly a thin laptop it's a bit thick but it's a small 13 inch laptop compared to the other ASUS laptop which is the ASUS Zenbook S16 so of course when you compare that uh, when you compare these both ASUS to the Snapdragon X Elite's uh, laptops then you will know that uh, the, uh, the Snapdragon X Elite will obviously have better battery life but performance wise uh, nothing can beat the AMD at the moment except the 16. Apple You can laptop. see here it only draws 33 watts which actually makes its lower performance scores make more sense In fact it appears to be quite power efficient as power efficiency is the primary factor that determines how hot your laptop will feel, how noticeable and annoying its fans will be, how long it lasts on battery, and even to some extent how it performs, we're going to double click in. To analyze this, we bring you my favorite graph. We plotted the results of each of these laptops and many more comparables so that you can get a clear picture of what's going on. The blue dots are Intel's Core Ultra 7 and 9 processors, the red are AMD's older Zen 4, the purple are these new AMD Zen 5 laptops, gold are Qualcomm's and white represents Apple's. The lines that join each dot together are for laptops where we could manually adjust power fed to their processors. The others were measured by running the laptop on each of their various performance modes. Best battery tends to feed the laptops less power. Best performance feeds them more. For all these results, we measured the average watts that the processor drew during a Cinebench multi-core test. Unfortunately for the Snapdragon laptops, Qualcomm doesn't allow developers to measure power draw. My gut is because the... See, so Qualcomm, as I mentioned before, does not allow uh, the measurement of power draw on its laptops and that's why I said it sucks last time because when you overhype something and then you don't let uh, people access your power draw that means you're trying to hide something is that you want to see less power draw but higher performance as you can see these new AMD Zen 5 chips are significantly more power efficient when they perform the same as their prior generation they draw around 10 to 20 watts less power that is amazing you can also see that they are almost identical to Qualcomm's new Snapdragon chips. However, Apple's M3 processors are still in the lead. By the way, if you're wondering why we don't do such a test with other benchmarks, it's because they just aren't as dependent on power draw. For example, if you So you can see here that uh, when you supply more power to the APU, which is the integrated uh, CPU or the central processing unit, and the uh, GPU, integrated GPU, which is the AMD Ryzen 9 uh, AI9, then you have more performance, okay? Now the problem with the Snapdragon is that uh, when you give it more power, it's going to draw 
uh, when you give it more power and it's good and, and it has a high performance task to do it's going to draw more power right so uh, that would actually lower its battery life as well so let's just uh, skip ahead and take a look at uh, this graph here. I'm surprised that our model with a more powerful HX processor actually beat out the one with a less powerful chip. Perhaps that is due to the more powerful chip having additional low power cores. The ProArt, unfortunately, it did not perform that well. Keep in mind, it does have a powerful NVIDIA RTX 4050 inside. This is likely the culprit. What's odd though, is that we specifically turned off the dedicated graphics using Asus's Eco mode before running this test. So uh, what he's saying here is that obviously the AMD is going to draw more power. Uh, oh, sorry, the uh, Asus Pro Art is going to draw more power because it not only has the AMD Ryzen AI 9 integrated graphics, it also has a dedicated NVIDIA GPU and more power is uh, being drawn by both of these even though if you turn off uh, one of them okay so if you turn off dedicated the dedicated gpu by nvidia somehow it's still providing power to it i don't know why uh just josh also doesn't know why so let's just keep ahead integrated graphics starting with wildlife which is a cross-platform benchmark here we see that the new a90m is the highest performing integrated graphics other than apple's m3 but qualcomm's xle processor performs really well here too now, in Times Buy, which is a DirectX 12 gaming benchmark, Intel's Arc Graphics comes out on top. However, this new 890M is still a decent step forward for AMD from their older 780M. By the way, this test can't be run on a Snapdragon laptop, so that's why the Slim 7X is missing from this test. So there you go, you can't even uh, run those kind of uh, graphical intensive uh, games on the Snapdragon X Elite like I told you before there's going to be X86 compatibility issues which you won't get with the AMD uh, Ryzen AI 9 but the only drawback to that performance is of course a lower battery life but both can last about a day and it's doing much better than the previous generation so the thing is I personally will wait for the Intel Luna Lake before making a decision on which uh, laptop to buy based on either the AMD Ryzen uh, AI 9 the, uh, or the Intel Luna Lake. I'm not even going to consider the Snapdragon X Lead. So, uh, okay guys, if you like videos like this, please do click on the notifications button, uh, subscribe obviously, and uh, comment down below. There we go. Let me show you the cut. This is the Kaiser Beyond knife. And if you buy it from thomastools.com.my with my link down below, you're going to get 5% off for this really fidgety and fun to play with a knife that you can use to open packages, put on display, and whatnot. Alright, thank you so much, guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care now. Bye.